In the theme today is all about Jesus as the center of everything. It's easy to say, it's easy to mention, it's easy that a sentence that we will all just agree with. But at the end of the day, Holy Spirit must make it practical for us. Amen? Holy Spirit must make it practical for each one of us. Let's say it's all about you, Jesus. Now we know there's that song, it's all about you. And may God help us, my brother and my sister, many times in church we, we have certain ways of doing and then we say certain things, but it's not necessarily accurate in our relationship with God. And it happens a few times in my life that Holy Spirit will, what's the right word for tune? He will address me on certain things. Like we said in worship, you know there's that whole teaching with praise and worship lifestyle and perspective about when we sing, He is risen, He is Lord. But you know, when I look at that man and I say to you, he is, you will ask me, who are you talking about? I'm looking at you and I say, he is. So when you look at God, when you, when you believe you're focusing on God, it is you have risen, not he has risen. Are you with me? But so easily we can sing songs and we teach ourselves a vocabulary where actually we're not focusing on the reality of who am I involved with right now? I'm in some conversation, but is it really with God? Or am I in some conversation about God? So I can say, come, now is the time to worship. You remember that song? Come, now is the time to worship. I don't know if we mentioned it last week. Nobody know. Okay. Come, now is the time to give your heart. I can sing it to you. And then you know I'm talking to you that you must give your heart to someone. I cannot tell God, God, you must give your heart to someone. Come, now is your time to worship. Must the Lord worship somebody? Oh. So I can, from my spirit, tell my soul. Come, now is the time to worship. David saying from his spirit to his soul. Soul, why are you downcast? God, you will still worship. Amen. You know about that scripture? So from your spirit that is perfect, reborn, with the fullness of God dwelling in your spirit, Holy Spirit testifying in your spirit, you speak to your soul, you address your soul, your emotions, your thought patterns, your will, everything. You address that. And many times that's what you do when you say, come, now is the time to worship. You tell yourself. You tell your emotions. You tell that negativity. You tell that whatever you're going through. You say, no, it's a time to worship. And then... One day every tongue will confess you are God. That's first person. That's focus. That's no time to greet people. That's no time. You can interrupt me while I'm speaking. That's better manners than interrupting somebody when they're worshiping God in the first person. Rather interrupt me and stand up and say, Hey, how are you doing, man? And say, oh, sorry, pastor. That's okay. <laughs> That's better. But we train ourselves a culture where we don't have the respect that we're supposed to have for God. Some say we are not under the law. No, that's a religion. But there's certain respect and certain protocol for God. Are you with me? Some people came through certain churches and then we go into the Pentecostal charismatic type of churches and then we need to be careful that we don't become so, think we are so free that we are not walking in a respect for God. The fear of God must always be on us. It doesn't matter what. Amen. Amen. May God help us. Okay. Let us rather start. Philippians 4. Philippians 4. You know Philippians 4. I know. I mean, you've heard sermons 29 or 94 of them about Philippians 4. But it's all about him and first of all, about how I must find myself in him. Remember we talked about I'm crucified with Christ. I died with Christ. I was, was buried with Christ. I was raised with Christ. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. And my life is now hidden in Christ Jesus. 
But Paul says it's revealed through the Word and revealed through the Holy Spirit. You get into the Word, you get through the Holy Spirit into the Word, and you will find the life that is hidden. God's not just going to show you your life. It is hidden. You must come and seek. When God says, seek me with your whole heart, it means he will not just, you ask, and he's just answering and just have it there. He wants you to seek him. Seek him. That means he's going to hide certain things from you. Not to be nasty, but he's longing for your heart, for your focus, for your worship. He's jealous for your love. Are you all with me? I know you've taken notes on your phones and everything. But are you, you, you with me? So please, may God create that hunger in you. That you will understand how to seek him and that he will be the focus. Let's go. In Christ, I must find myself. Steadfastness. Everybody say steadfastness. Philippians 4 verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy, my crown, stand firm in the Lord. Everybody, in the Lord. Lord. Stand firm in the Lord. In this way, dear friends. Now stand firm in the Lord, my brother, my sister. It's not when my circumstances are okay, then I stand firm. When my emotions are stable, when the hurts are healed, then I stand firm. No, in spite of emotions, in spite of fed upness, in spite of whatever you go through, in spite of success, in spite of failure, you stand firm in the Lord. The danger is when there's success, I'm just, I'm drowning in the provision. That's every time when the heart of Israel went wrong, into the wrong place. But God wants to trust you with his blessing. He wants to trust you with Canaan. But then you must take his word, the Ten Commandments, the principle not under the law in the law see his heart in the principles in everything that he taught them through the wilderness you go through the wilderness to protect you against Canaan you go through the wilderness to protect you against Canaan so that the provision will not be become the curse God's blessings mustn't become the curse in the hand of hell but it will be if you don't first understand who you are in him Remember, took them out of Egypt to the mountain and said, I brought you out to fulfill my promises that you will go to Canaan that I promised. Yes, did he say that? No. He brought them out and then he imparted identity. He said, you are my special treasure, a holy priesthood. Oh, we see it in the New Testament also, 1 Peter 2, hey? But he said that there to the Israelites, Just as they came from Egypt into the desert. Understand your identity. And from that place, after saying, understand who you are. After that, he took Moses for the Ten Commandments. Because they must see the Ten Commandments in the light of their identity. Their preciousness of who he is. I took you, I bore you on eagle's wings. And I brought you to myself, he said in Exodus 19. And after that, after he shared his heart. He gave the commandments. But if we don't hear God's heart, we will go with the commandments, with the commandments. We try to stand firm, but we are standing firm in performance, in the law, in religion, in everything. We try, we try, we try, but we cannot stand firm because we must first hear his heart. And that is a faith statement. God, I need to see your heart. That does not mean understand. Because many times we want to understand everything and say, now I see because my logic, my logic brain understands. Now I see. No, no, no. That is for you to be in control. For you to be in control. God many times will make sure you don't understand because he wants you to walk by. The righteous will walk by faith. The righteous will overcome. You will overcome the world by faith. 1 John 5. God is pleased by faith. Faith, Hebrews 11, 6. Amen. I don't look like that. Just smile at least. Even if it's a choice, you'll smile, you know. Stand firm in the Lord. What did we say? I mean, right there, Ephesians 6. Uh, I know you remember the seven Sundays that we talked about the armor of God and the 29 times that we had revision about that. In this past 15 years. But remember what we said. It's not just the sword of the spirit. That's the word of God. Everything, everything, everything is the word. Because everything's going to fall except the word. Heaven and earth will be shaken. And it will be shaken. There's only one that will stand. 
the word. And if you built your life, built your house, built what you have on the word, it will stand. It will stand. Amen. God wants to brag about his word. God wants to brag about who he is. Therefore, you will send the storm so that the focus will be on what his son came to do and how the son revealed to the father. Amen. So stand firm in the Lord. Stand firm in the Lord. In the Lord. We said in that seven sermons, remember I did this? Can you remember? Hello? Helmet off? Of what? You are free, saved through the word, through the word. Helmet of salvation to protect your thoughts. Breastplate of righteousness so that your heart is protected through the word. Amen. Belt of truth. There's nothing that I will bind closer to myself. Not the fear will bind me. Not that my circumstances will be so close. Nothing will be so close to me than the word of God. The word of truth. The closest to me is freedom. The belt of truth. The truth will set you free what keep you bound is the freedom of god through the belt of truth amen the sword of the spirit that's the word of god so that you can understand what is from the soul what is from the spirit what makes you baboon if you only have a soul what makes you human the fact that you have a spirit god breath breathed from himself spirit into you ruach that makes you a human Some of us uh, ignore our spirit and then make decisions like baboons. But uh, you won't believe it. Sometimes they make even then better decisions. But that was in the past. Never, ever again. Amen. Where are we? With the sword of the spirit, the word of God. The shield of faith. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing comes from the word of God. So the whole thing is the shield. You keep the word there against the arrows from the enemy. You are still with me. So everything, everything of the armor to stand firm in the Lord is through the word of God. You have it? I know you've written that down. Thank you. Right. Firm in the Lord. Next one. Say it Joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Okay. You know that song? Rejoice. So that's your four by four. Everybody say four by four. You go through the mud, you go through the sea. That's the time. You know that guy, he's excited when he's the, he's the hill, when he's the mud. Then he put his, his truck there in a four by four. And now he's going to enjoy it. For some reason, we don't understand that as Christians. Oh, come on. What about we, James 1, count it all? Oh, you count it. Why? Because it's not naturally going to be joy. <laughs> but you choose to count it all joy. Because you know, you count... When you count your money, well, there's a song like that, but country song. Count your money, (laughs) okay? And you're excited because you know what's going to happen because you have this money. When you count what you go through, through this tribulation, through this trial, through this, and you know what's going to be the end result, how God has prepared you and going to prepare you that you have everything, everything, you lack nothing for everything that God has for you to live that dream. When you understand that counting, then you can count it all joy. Then there's joy because you know where you're going to. You know what's going to happen. Like that guy, I know if I put down this five million then this is going to happen. I'm going to have that and that and that. Sometimes not necessarily a negative thing. Maybe for the kingdom, maybe for something. I'm just talking about the principle. So count, count it accurately what you're going through. Because it's going to work for your benefit because God is a good God. You cannot manipulate him with a prosperity teaching. No. But God is a good God. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. In the Lord. You not necessarily rejoice in circumstance. You pray, you pray, you pray by faith. And then the circumstances change. And then you have joy because the circumstances change. And you give God the glory. That is a place of thankfulness. And acknowledging that it was all because of Him. But your joy does not start when your circumstances changed. And when you had a breakthrough. The joy starts if you know Christ. You are in Him and He is in you. Because his joy is your strength. His emotions. Hello. What energizes him is energizing you. 
And that joy of the Lord, that's your strength. That joy that you can rejoice in the Lord is like a reward for life. Ecclesiastes says, there's some, some people, my translation, some guys, God gives him everything. The desires of his heart, everything that he trusts for, he receives the word, everything. Everybody say everything. 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 But then he says, God does not give him the ability to enjoy it. And then there's others that follow God in a contentment. And it says there, just a few verses further, and God also gives him the ability to enjoy what he has. You'll find some billionaires, you'll find some millionaires that are more stressed than other guys. I don't know if you know about it's a gift from God. But it starts with, I rejoice in the Lord. Doesn't matter if it's success, if it's failure, if it's whatever going around. I'm not talking about compromise. You can do whatever you want. Don't have to care. That's arrogance. But in spite of what you're going through, in spite of your struggling with the thing, you're going to have the victory. You're going to have the victory. But start with the joy that is your strength, that is also a reward. When you are faithful with your two talents, become four. Five talents, become ten. Hello? Then, what's happening? Oh, five talents become ten. I will give you authority. Everybody say authority. He gives you stature over ten cities. And then, what is the reward? Enter the joy that your master enjoy. You can enter a place of knowing what satisfies my father will satisfy me. That is a reward. That is the reward. What brings him joy will bring you joy. Where he's excited about something, you will be excited with your father. That is a major, major reward. Not just that two talents became four and you're growing in prosperity or growing in success. Not just stature that you've given authority over four cities. That you, that you can feel what he feels. That you can enjoy what your dad, your father enjoys. That is an amazing, an amazing reward. Rejoice in the Lord. Train yourself to come into that place. Rejoice in the Lord. When you are in the Lord, what he feels, you feel. What he rejoices about, you rejoice about. What is giving fulfillment to him, it's giving fulfillment to you. Everything about Jesus in him, in him. Stand firm in him, rejoice in him. Next one. Number three. Prayer. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, petition, give thank, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Don't be anxious about anything. You can find yourself in anxiety, in fear, in stress, in negativity, in depression, in success, in vision, in a lot of ideas. In a place of, you will hear right now what I'm saying, but you are busy with something else. Because, not I don't want to say what the hell, I have nothing to do with this. But the thing of, it's just not so important. It's more important for me to be found in my boredom, more to be found in things that gives me a, a what's the word, a kick? What's the right word? Excitement. And I choose that it will not be God and His word. Or you can make the decision now and have victory now and you frustrate hell, you frustrate the demons. Or you can sit here and make this decision. I, I'm, I'm, my thoughts are in other places. I'm not in the conversation. I'm not in the prayer. When I will find, if we're talking about you find yourself in the anxiety or you find yourself the opposite in prayer. In prayer, in petition, in the place of thanksgiving. Then you will have your breakthrough that we will see in the next, next seven points. You will have your breakthrough. But don't be anxious. Part of it, don't be bored when you're busy with God. If you rejoice in the Lord, you make a decision to be excited when you hear a sermon. <laughs> okay. Look excited. Oh, that's fake. Okay. Try more. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what am I saying? You make the decision. I will rejoice in the word. I will rejoice in his presence. I will rejoice. That's why we train ourselves with worship through music. Remember, praise and worship is a lifestyle. Not just when we stand. 
and say, now we're going to worship the Lord. Why did you 10 minutes ago worship the devil? Now we're going to worship the Lord. No, 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 no. You worship the Lord your, through your whole life. Hello? But now we're going to declare it through song and dance and singing. We're going to declare through, what, what, through our singing what we will live in the week. By his grace. By his grace. Amen. Amen. So you sit there and you're worshiping God by focusing on him and choose to be excited about his word. That's why it's good to say amen. That's why it's good to say hallelujah. I'm not saying in a traditional way, some in a Pentecostal way, we did it sometimes not with the right attitude. I always say, but that's something the white is supposed to learn from the rest. The white is mourn. You know? I'm sorry. It's not racism, but at least some of the Zulu guys, amen, hallelujah, and you know. And when you open your mouth, why we can open our mouth when we are irritated, when we're frustrated, when we are fed up, when we had it up to here, when we had it up here. Oh, no. It's not, I'm going to choose now to open my mouth and be frustrated and say what I want to say. You don't have to choose that. It's just going to happen. <laughs> what about get yourself full of the word? So that it's just going to happen. When you come into that circumstance, you just start to pray. You, you, you know the word, and you're not going to use the word as a trick. But you're full of the word that when you open your mouth and you go through something, what is inside the victory through the word that is in you, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. But you feel, ah, but it didn't work in the past. So what? You fell with your bicycle, and then you decide, I will never be able to ride bicycle. No. Now, for what you will do it with the word of God? You started to memorize, but oof, it was such a pity and it was such a list. And you don't see the impact. Well, that's the first time. You make the decision. Be anxious of nothing. That's a sin. No, be honest if you're anxious. Be honest. And if in some cases you need medicine to help you to get out of it, yes, but medicine mustn't be the, what is the crook, the, the substitute. The substitute for getting into the word so that the anxiousness will go. Are you with me? It cannot be a substitute for the word. But the, the, the decision, don't be anxious, but be in faith. No. Opposite, get in conversation with God. And that is in prayer. Prayer, everybody say positioning. positioning. Prayer is positioning before God. Supplication, that supplication... Petition. Someone says petition. Some say supplication. There's some other words also. Has to do with intensity. I put this out with a focus and an intensity. Met gebed in smeeking. It's not moaning. It's not karam. It's not nagging. It's smeeking. It's about intensity in my focus to you. I have respect in my prayer to you, Lord. I'm not just looking at my circumstances. Plus, God, please come and help me here and here. And you're just looking here and you're busy there. And, and come and do that and be here and stop that. And stop, as if you are just ordering him, but you're not even looking at him. That's not respect. That's no respect. So when you come to God, prayer, you will position yourself before God. You are in conversation with God. In conversation with God. You're not speaking to God, but you're in anxiety. You're in your thoughts. You are sitting here, but you're in your thoughts. You are in that thing. You are in your boredom. You are in your cell phone. You are in your whatever. We're in your other glory. No. Not supposed to be. You are in the flesh. And it's amazing how sometimes when you open the word, when you start to sing, then just people just need to, can, they cannot take it. Then you cannot. We had guys with a full-time school. They can study subjects. They can write the exams, but they cannot study word and write the exam and, and pass. We saw that in the study years, and sometimes it was because this was certain things need to be settled with certain demonic presence even. Not that the guy was full of demons, but that you must not have fellowship with demons. You can walk with demons. You can walk. He spoke to the church and said, don't have fellowship with demons. You can have very much fellowship with the spirit of fear, with the spirit of compromise, with the spirit of lust, with the spirit of this, with the spirit of self-justification. You can have a lot of wonderful fellowship with him. 
But you know, the opposite of the true is so excellent that you can have fellowship with God. And that fellowship, that's the knock on the door of Revelation 3.20 for fellowship. Not, first of all, to give your life to Christ. It, we can use it in that, as a metaphor, uh, in a way when somebody gives their lives to Christ. But God is speaking there to the church. He's speaking to the seven churches and said, I'm, knock, I'm standing at the door and I knock. For what? For you to give your life to me? No. For you to have fellowship with me. Chardonnay? Moy cake. I'll say, are you guys with me? So in that sense, what I'm saying is, may God help you that you understand I'm in prayer. I am in conversation with him. But who of you were in a conversation? You are in the conversation, but you are, you are not there. You're not in the conversation. You are in all the other stuff. You are busy with so many other things because you even know, you even know where the guy's going. My mother, ooh, she could talk long. I hope I didn't judge her. That's because then I would have long sermons, but luckily I don't have long sermons. But um, if I judge and have long sermons and you judge me, you're going to have double the long sermons. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't even try. What am I saying? What am I saying? I wanted to say something, Jolene. My mother, man. <laughs> She could preach, oh, and she could talk. I understand. There was not a lot of people around her, but you must be on, in the conversation. So I can tell you this. My wife is not here. So bottom line. <laughs> so my mother was carrying on like for half an hour. She could speak with Jeline much longer. I would just tell her, Mom, I need to go now. Oh, this or that or that. She was speaking to, her, speaking to her, but she was not in the conversation. She was watching something on TV. And while my mother was talking about some, not deep, serious, but serious stuff, something happened on TV, and she broke out laughing. <laughs> she started to laugh over the phone. My wife, while, and so she had to confess and say, sorry, I was watching something also. <laughs> We teased a lot for years about that one. Now my, my brother, my sister, you can be busy speaking with somebody but that you are not in the conversation. With prayer, genuine prayer, you are in the conversation. Like I said with the worship, you don't say, come now is your time to worship. Lord, ordering God to worship. No, if you want, if you're in the conversation, you'll say, I come. Now is my time to worship. I come. Yeah, are you with me? So God's going to help us. When you are really in worship, what are you saying? Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. You're looking at God and you say, you're preaching to him. What are you doing? Why are you telling God that he must humble himself in the sight of, in the sight of who? What Lord must he humble himself? You're going to tell that the Lord to the Lord. You can tell your flesh. You can tell your soul. You can tell your neighbor. You can open your eyes and you can say, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. That's genuine. That's fake. You are in the conversation. It's not some flaky words that means actually not. When you want to sing it from your spirit and you're looking at the Lord with respect, you say, I humble myself in your sight, O Lord. And you, you lift me up. And you, you lift me up. That's genuine, relating in genuine conversation, genuine worship. Where the word that I sing is not just some Christian word of a Christian song that I know. Now, what I'm telling you here, God had to tune me many times, many times. And then afterwards, I just still find myself. Where I led worship for 20 years, it happened quite a few times where God, Holy Spirit said to me after about 10, 15 years, what are you singing? I was like, you know, what am I singing? I'm, Lord, I'm worshiping you. And then God started to challenge me about my words, about my focus, and about the re reality, and about the fakeness of I can say something, but I'm not in the conversation. I'm not really in the song. <sighs> Spirit can preach to your soul. That's good. So humble yourself. Humble yourself. Like David said to his soul. But somewhere it's supposed to happen. There was a song in Afrikaans, Kom sing a nieuwe lied vir home. We don't have something like that in English, I think. 
that about I will sing a new song unto the Lord. But now somewhere you must sing it. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm going to give you a thousand rand. Say to a student, he will remind you very quickly. <laughs> Pastor, you just sing it. Come on, pick bay. You know, uh, why you just sing to me, uh, you're going to give me a thousand rand. You sing to me, you're going to give me a thousand rand. Is there something not lacquer there? No, you will not say it, you will just think it. If every day I come to the student and say, I'm going to give you a thousand rand. Now, why can you sing to God and say, I'm going to sing a new song? But you never sing the new song. So, somewhere you sing the new song. And then just take melody and just sing what is coming up in your heart like a prayer. And you just start to sing the praises of God. Not according to the memory of some other melody that's going with certain words. That's not a new song. Are you with me? We don't actually, woo, point three only. Okay, with prayer involved in the conversation, in the conversation, supplication of intensity and thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, my brother, my sister, that's at the end of the day, the bridge the Christian bridge over troubled water. Okay. Into the next verse of, of the peace of God. The bridge over that troubled water in your soul. It's thanksgiving. You can end the conversation, prayer, with focus, with intensity. But at the end of the day, if I walk away there, I can take it back so that I can walk in anxiety. But if I want to leave the anxiety, leave the stuff there, I need to walk away with thanksgiving. Let's say walk away away. with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What happened to the other guys? Okay. They are walking with thanksgiving out. (laughs) Uh, What am I saying? Are you with me? That thanksgiving, my brother, my sister. So because why? I cannot be thankful if I'm found and I find myself in negativity and my circumstances and challenges and finances doesn't work out, relationship and I'm hurt and I'm full of this. I don't trust people. You find yourself in all that rubbish. You cannot be thankful. And you cannot get into verse 7 of, and the peace of God, what it transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. You will never get into God's peace. It's not possible. Go and fight, go and fight the flesh, but, but you are found in stress, you, you're found in that anxiety, found in that fear, you will, the devil will just do that over the cliff, just take you there. Uh-uh, that's not God's life for you. So get yourself into that place of genuine prayer, with a focus, with a respect, hello, in your supplication. In your petition before God, this is what I petition. This is really who I am and what I stand for, what I believe, what I ask, Lord. But I leave it with you. And I'm still, the first point, will stand strong in you. Doesn't matter if I understand your answer. I will still rejoice in you. Not rejoice in the answer when you've done what I've asked you to do. But I will still rejoice in you because I'm having the honor of standing in your presence, positioned in prayer with a focus on you, and I'm amazed at who you are. Therefore, I have such a lot of things to be thankful for. If that thankfulness is there, then the next point. Number four, peace. Peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. We're talking about everything in. Rejoice in the Lord. Stand firm in the Lord. Prayer in the conversation. Involved in the conversation. Now, uh, uh, when the peace of God is around your heart, your heart is where? In peace. When your mind is surrounded and protected by peace, where's your mind is in the peace. In the peace. Everybody say, in the peace. Because at the end of the day, the peace is the prince of peace. It's a person, it is God, the Prince of Peace. If you allow Him, if you walk this road, if you push for these, in this, in these principles, you will understand how the peace will work there. Now in your heart, there could be still struggles and temptations or, or things that you go through. In your mind, there's still thoughts and it's going, sometimes running wild. But in spite of the things happening, the wars in here, still God's peace 
over you. Are you with me? Retabili, just help the man there. Aze, lack of focus. So what are we saying? What are we saying? You can find yourself in the peace. And in the place where my heart is in the peace of God, they sort out your heart. Where your mind is in the peace of God, there sort out your heart. Because God's peace is your protection. Let's say peace is protection. Let's say that peace is protection. And you are protected even against that thoughts, even against that chorus in your heart sometimes. Now you and God sort it out. That's why from that place, point number five, your thoughts. Now, if you understand that and you've put your heart in that place of peace, you put your mind in that place of peace through the prayer, through the petition, through the thanksgiving, through the rejoicing in the Lord, through the standing firm in God. Now, finally then, now try to think the right thoughts. Not before the time, not the trick that the world tells you and some of the guy positive thinking and this thinking and that thing. Yeah, yeah, the principle of the word can work out there in the world, but not in the context of relationship, not in the context of eternal value. No eternal value. And when we speak like this and other thoughts come up in your mind, just know that's hell. That's the thoughts from hell. For some reason, some guys, when they see the ball that is not round, the ragabush, you know that thing. They can focus. I must try and focus now because they could win. And then I must remember to rejoice when they. But there's the drag the three. It's going to try, that one. Try. You try to score. I mean, why other way around? All right, I don't know. But bottom line, what am I saying? That stupid man, who is doing like that? Nobody. But why, in, when we are busy with the word, I must make the choice. I must make the choice to rejoice. I must make the choice to have a focus with my thoughts on that. Hell is all against you. And the enemy will not be lazy. The enemy will not be lazy. He will be very faithful to try and mess up your life, especially through your thoughts. Especially through your thoughts. Now, too many times, we must get our thoughts in line. But the problem is, when I get the temptation to do this, when I make the, tempta- make the decision right now, I will not focus. I will choose boredom. I will choose that. I will choose focus on all the other stuff. Because hell must make sure that you will not focus on the word because the word can change you. He knows a thousand times more than you that the word will change you and he will be in trouble if you focus on the word. So whatever demon is assigned to your life must make sure that you sit here and you mess up when you hear the word by not focusing on the word because it can set you free and then hell is in trouble in your life. So hell must secure his, his place in your life. Those demons that you can have fellowship in the week must, must make sure that you keep them as they your fellow, (laughs) your fellow friend. And for that, you must make sure that your thoughts will not align with his thoughts because the word of God is his thoughts. But finally, brethren, if you want to get into a place of real victory and quality life that has eternal value, you need to change some stuff. It's not when I'm here, now I want to beat up somebody that I stand here and I just want to say whatever I want to say. I just want to do whatever I want to do. That's not where the place where you must resist the devil. Go back. It's in your thought life. Because your thoughts build a bridge. When I feel depressed, I get an attitude. It shows on my face. I'm muff. Well, I don't know what's muff in English. Uh, and you know and I'm negative and I'm easily triggered I'm frustrated just leave me alone because I'm angry now at someone and then the, and the fruit of spirit is gone and then I just say what I want and later I will be found unfaithful and I justify myself I don't have to study now I don't have to do my work because I'm going through something and that is excellent thought patterns that you built you built that road you built that N1 for yourself so that hell don't have to stress 
for you to have a good, excellent life on earth. He, you'll go to heaven. He cannot do anything about that. But at least he can try and mess up as far as possible your life so that you can be his comedy while you're on earth for him to look at. No, 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 no. <laughs> Are you with me? Oh, come on, man. man let's trust God. So you, in this place, when you start to think, you take the thoughts captive captive unto Christ. Jy hebt hier die gedagte is gevangen tot gehoorzaamheid aan Christus. Every thought you must take captive to obedience to Christ. But how do you know the thought is not from God? Because you know his thoughts. You study your word. This, these are the thoughts of God. If you know the word, you know what thoughts to take captive and what not. But if you don't know the word, even the devil will tell you, oh, take that thought captive. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Take that thought captive. Let's question that thought. That is the snake in the Garden of Eden, where there's perfection, 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 perfection in everything. But let's go with the thought life. Let's go with the reasoning. Did God really say this? Why did he say that? Let's question just a little bit, you know? Let's talk about this. How many times you talk about things, but it's not from God? It's some snake in Eden, in your Eden, in the presence of very nice fruit. In the presence of very nice fruit, very nice opportunity, very nice experience, very nice things. You could have a conversation, and the problem is the conversation. The problem is the reasoning. The problem is in your thought life. And that will lead you into the place of eat from the fruit and lose your destiny. Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, Lovely, admirable, excellent, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about such things. You make a choice. Not when you want to make a decision. Not a choice with what you want and what you don't want to do. When you get to your will. You go before you get to your will, you get to your thoughts. Because all, the, all these thoughts into this, getting onto this road, going to push your will into doing something r ridiculous. Who did something in the past or says something and you cannot believe you did it, you cannot believe you said it. Only me. Da achter? Oh, oh, jylle ook. Kan jy glo? Toch, daar is vier heiliges wat nog nooit het gehad het nie. What am I saying? Please, my brother, my sister, oh man, get into this place. See the thoughts of God. If the thoughts of God speaks to you, or you feel a oh, or you get a revelation through it, or you feel you understand it or not, just get to know his thoughts. Put it in there. I mean, whatever is true. It's true that he nailed me, that he talked behind my back. No, that's the facts. Truth will set you free. And the truth is forgive him. The truth is forgive him. Amen. Noble, what is excellent, with respect, what is right. Not I'm right, he's wrong. What is right is you need to go and burn in hell when you talk about right and wrong. Right here is what is righteous before God. And he is your righteousness. Once again, you find yourself in him. And you become the righteousness of God only in Christ Jesus. Only in Christ Jesus. But the tree of knowledge of good and good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of what is right and what is wrong. Ah, uh -uh, not there. Lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about these things. You will have the capacity to do that if you remember the first five points of the chapter. How? Remember in, in, the, in the letters. Paul through the Holy Spirit and the other guys also. They build precept upon precept. So it's not just you can take this out of context. Precept upon precept, the word talks about. You build not first that brick on that level. If you're a little bit cuckoo and the brain is gone, then you try and do that. The brick, you won't believe it, you're going to fall on someone. So try the bricks there and build upon the bricks the next one. So look in through the letters. Look at context. Look at how to build the one upon the other. Amen. Just, just look differently. You're intimidating me with your face, you know. 
God have mercy. Okay, where are we now? Number six. There's only ten points. Okay, relationships. Whatever you have learned, received, heard, seen, put it into practice. Everybody say, put it into practice. Other translations is do it. Other translations say, obey it. Dundet. What are we talking about? There's many people. They've heard, they've seen, and they are burning in hell. They went, they saw Jesus. They've heard all the teaching firsthand, firsthand. They learned nothing. They received nothing. They obeyed nothing. They are burning in hell. You can sit here and you can teach yourself how to hear, how to see certain things, and say even receive certain things, but at the end of the day, decide not to walk in it, not to walk in it, and actually have learned nothing and doing nothing. That's the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower. It doesn't say the guy heard the word and rejected it. No, 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 no. Those guys with in the rocky field, those guys with the thorns and the thistles, he said they heard the word. It's the people that heard the word. They received. Everybody say received. received. They received the word in their hearts. But the condition of the heart. The condition of the heart. Was not positioned in such a way of respect. To receive the incorruptible seed. For a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest for the kingdom. No. So you better get the rocks out. When you plug a land, a brak, a brak land, Ooh, that's a very interesting Afrikaans word that the word says, but it's like a field that you must get all the rubbish out, get all the that out, get all the rocks out so that you can plant, plant the mealies, all the wheat, all the this, all the that, all the whatever. Get the rocks out of your heart. Work, work at it. Let the Holy Spirit show you. Get the thorns and the thistles and all that stuff is out so that you position your heart as good ground so that you don't just hear see receive but you really have learned something and you can do it obedience is a quality act of love as a response to god obedience is a quality true genuine reaction because god said if you love me you will obey me not if you love me I will manipulate you. Not tell your wife, if you love me, you'll give me breakfast in bed. You'll get something else. Okay. No, that's wrong. But God is saying, if you love me, let me explain to you what is the quality of that love. Obedience. If you love me, it will not be fake. That means I love you, but I do whatever I want. That's fake love. But if you love me, you have the genuine love. Obedience will be in it. Because your love is genuine, your love is true, your love is, has substance, substance in the word love. Amen. May God help us. That's number six. Number seven. We're going for a landing, nearly. Contentment. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content. Whatever, whatever, whatever the circumstance. You have learned to be content. Contentment is... Okay, I will just accept whatever. No, nobody said you must accept whatever. You better stand in faith. You better stand in the Lord. There's certain things you cannot accept. If you don't know the word, you don't know what to accept and what to release. There's certain things you must just be content about. There's certain things you must trust God for, for change. Contentment, contentment is, doesn't matter the circumstance. I am not in circumstance. I'm not in need. I'm not saying this because I am in need. Oh, but the fact, many times he had no food, many times he was in jail, many times things happened, really, really, really bad things happened to him when he was scratched, snatched, whatever, with a, what, what is he in, 40 hours? Yeah, that. Many times, he was in need. But he, what is he saying? I am, I'm not saying I'm in need. Why? Because I've learned how to be content. I know how 
thankfulness work. I know how to be in Christ. I know how to know I have everything in Christ. I've learned that my circumstances, what I go through, does not determine who I am and what state I will be in. And that state I will be in of victory that I can go from strength to strength, glory to glory. I'm not defined by my circumstances. I'm not defined by success or for failure. I'm defined by who he is. Therefore, I call that contentment. That is contentment. And in that place of I trust God for more, whatever, if God is giving me more, that's a blessing, great. But I'm fulfilled in him. Number eight. You see, we can go quick. Training. Philippians 4, 12. I know that what it is to be in need, by fact. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned. Everybody say learned. learned. The secret, secret of being content in any and every situation, whatever, well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I have learned. You are in learning. You will always be in a place of training. It means like I'm always a student. I never can be somebody. That's rubbish. Remember we said, God challenged me, what are you telling your child? What are you going to become one day? Oh, you became whatever you can become. And that is, I became a child of God. That's the highest level of what you can become. You can become the bride of Christ, the servant of the Lord, a child of God that grow up as a son of God, the temple of the Spirit. You cannot become something more. So you cannot tell your child, what are you going to become? Unless he didn't give his life to Christ. But if he is a child of God, how are you going to express your calling? How are you going to live out the calling that God has for you here on earth? Oh, as an engineer. Oh, as a doctor. That's how you're going to live out the calling. You will be trained. But training is till he comes. I'm trained to obey. Make disciples. Baptize them. Teach them what? To know a lot. No. Teach them to obey. Teach them to obey. There's always something more to obey. There's always something more that I will learn how to obey God. There's always something more that I will learn how to obey God, how to come in a greater level of intimacy with Him. So it will always be that level of training, and that is called opportunity. Everybody say, training, training. is opportunity. If there's no opportunity further on earth for you, you must just die and go to heaven. That is if, if, if. But if there is opportunity for you, God says, no, 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 no. You will have training today for tomorrow for a next level of excellence, next level of, of fitness, next level of that, next level of more quality life. If there's any opportunity for that, God puts you in a place of training and that is that everything will work for the good for those who love him. I've, in every situation, I've learned the secret. Everybody say secret. secret. Secret of being content. May God help you to understand that secret. Amen. That's eight. Number nine. Ability. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, so you want to beat up that other guy, you're fed up with him, and you just, can, you just speak this word. It will happen, you know? You want to beat up the guy, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And go and beat up the guy. Uh, read the scripture in context. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that context is contentment. It's not just, I can do all things, all circumstances will change, because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No. It means, even if circumstances does not change, I can be content. I can be finding myself. I can rejoice in the Lord. I can be stand steadfast in Christ. I can be in, in conversation with prayer and petition and thanksgiving before God. I can have the peace of God. I can have the right thoughts. And with all these things, Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Please, stay context. Stay with context. Amen. Number 10. Provision. Philippians, last one. 419. And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in, of his glory in Christ Jesus. The riches of his glory. According to what? According to what you ask. No. According to your need. That is sometimes greed. And you, but you don't know that. 
You ask for certain things that he's going to destroy you. Moses, you come down the mountain, you see the mess. The mess Israel made with a golden calf and everything. They worship the calf. He go up, goes up the mountain and he in intercession reminds God about the vision. The vision. He was down there, he saw the mess about worship. And he goes up the mountain to remind God about the vision. God, you, you promised us Canaan, Canaan. But then for the second time, he comes and he does intercession. And this time, he does it not in the context of vision and God's promises. He do it in the context of worship. And he says, God, please, for your name's sake, for your name's sake, that's worship. And if not, blot my name from the book of life. Woo, what a prayer. Boom. And if not, blot my name from the book of life, but your name needs to be glorified. And God said, I'm well pleased with you. And God said, and he changed God's mind. And God said, okay, I will go with you into Canaan. Oh, come on, my brother, my sister. We can stand on the promises of God's provision for your life. But the biggest provision God has given you already, and that is his presence. His presence, his wisdom. Hello. His strength, his joy, his peace. Oh, let's make a list of a million. Everything that you received already in Christ Jesus. Start from that point. Start from that point. And from that place of the abundance that is already in your spirit. God will meet your needs. Paul said, I am not in lack. Circumstances, facts. I didn't have food, jail, this happened, that happened. But I don't have any lack. I have the fullness of God in me. I'm blessed in Christ Jesus. Sounds very spiritual. But God is a practical God. It will work out practically. That you will find the supernatural peace, supernatural joy, supernatural strength in your heart. Walk into that place and God will surprise you. And the environment must respond to you. Because what is seen through you is Christ. Is Christ. He will according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. The child is saying, can I have ice cream or can I have chocolate? And you pray, your prayer, can I, I, I trust you, Lord, for ice cream or chocolate? And then God doesn't answer your prayer. You just hear the devil saying to you, eat your beans and your meat. He's taking your focus away from the Lord. <laughs> according to what God knows is the best for you. And like a dad would say, and even ignore the request of ice cream or chocolate. He will just say, eat your meat and your beans. He absolutely gave you an answer according to things that he knows even 100 times better than you, what you need at that moment. So let's not go in a tantrum in prayer. That if we position ourselves accurately in Christ, you will find a life more and more. Guys, that God will surprise you in that what he's going to do. Are you still here? Just give your neighbor a holy smack and say, time to wake up. He's finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for who you are. God, we love you. God, we love you. And we want to just say, it's all about you, Lord Jesus. Show us, show us how to live from a place in your word. Teach us your thoughts. Holy Spirit, open it up for us through the word of God. Give every man, woman in this place a hunger, a hunger, a hunger for your presence. Please, Lord, help us. And I pray that I speak that over every man, woman in this place to, to stand fast, to be strengthened, to be steady with stability, with stature in you, to find their joy, their strength in you, to find their peace beyond all understanding in you. Oh God, to find themselves in a focused conversation with respect when they pray. With a heart of thanksgiving, knowing it's all because of your grace and nothing because of us. Do that in our lives. Please, Lord, help us not to be hearers of the word. That we can see and hear, but that we will learn, receive, and do what you ask us. We can only do that by your grace, but help us, Holy Spirit, please. Thank you that you teach us a life of contentment. Forgive us for negativity, for many times, even in a prayer, moaning and groaning, saying we are just honest with God. 
God, forgive us. Teach us your protocol, your respect for you in your presence and even in prayer. Show us, Lord, how we can all do all of this with contentment as we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, you, Lord, and that you will supply. Thank you, Lord, that you don't answer our prayers many times according to what we ask, but according to what we need. Thank you for the wisdom of our Father. God, you are our Father and your wisdom. Protect us from prayers in directions that could actually destroy us. But thank you, Father, that in your wisdom, in your love, You answer our prayers according to the richness of your excellence, of your glory, of your wisdom, according to the dream that you have for each one of us for our future. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. As all say, amen, amen. Let it be so.